Next question is from Shrumpf836. What is everyone's method for recovering faster from overtraining? Oh, I, I got this down to Ooh. a T for me. Uh, two things. makes a huge difference. So if I feel like, uh, man, I, I'm going a little too hard. And typically I notice this because I feel it in my joints and I feel my performance start to decline. And so there's this, I, I'll do this, this two things and it makes a huge difference. One, the most important, is I make sure I get a really good night of sleep that night. And what I mean by that is I, an hour or two before I want to be asleep, I wear blue light blocking glasses or I turn off electronics. I'll use some of our, our sponsors products like the, like the, you know, Ned, uh, Mellow and maybe their sleep products, something like that to, you know, wind me down. I'll make sure the next day I don't have to wake up super early. That's number one. Here's number two. And this changed a lot for me through my lifting career. I used to think sitting down on the couch and relaxing all day would help me recover faster. It's it's actually it it, it, it didn't. In fact, what helped me recover faster was being active, mm -hmm. not not hard active, but like stretching, trigger sessions, doing mobility work. I mean, dramatically improved my recovery. I couldn't believe the difference. So it's like, oh, my legs are overtrained a little bit. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to stretch them do some body weight squats, some single leg toe touches, just kind of throughout the day, move them. And boy, did that make a difference in my recovery. So I, I have things that are like perfect world, money doesn't matter, have access to all these things, what do I do? And then I have like the big rocks, right? So like big rocks are hydration, sleep, high protein, uh, mobility, right? I can do all those things. I don't need any tools. I don't, doesn't cost me a lot of money to do that. I stay well fed, hit my protein intake. I supposed to drink a lot of water, get down and do some good mobility work to mobilize myself and then, and then get good rest. Like that is the fastest way to recover. Now there's a lot of cool tools out there and things that we have access to that I love to do in a perfect world. I get a deep tissue massage that night. I use the infrared uh, sauna yeah. and then the, all the other things that I talked about with uh, hydra hydration and making sure I'm getting enough nutrition. Like in the perfect world, I'm doing all of that. Like mm -hmm. I get the deep tissue massage, I mobilize, I infrared sauna. I also uh, get all my nutrition I need and hydrate and sleep. And then that's like the best recovery. Now the real reality of it is not all, not all the time can I put string all those things together. But the first big blocks, it has to be getting a, getting enough fluids, staying mobile and active, which was a game changer for me because I thought the same way too as a kid. I used to hammer my body and think, I don't want to move anymore because I don't want to burn any more calories. I want all those calories to go to recovering and building muscle. That was my theory. And that's terrible. And being active and mobilizing mm -hmm. and being flexible and doing that, getting the joints moving through full range of motion after you've tightened everything down for an hour is one of the best things you can do to speed up recovery. So that is something that has changed over time. And then just making sure that you get you get your adequate protein and calorie intake after a hard training session. Just got to think that when you overreach like that, the body needs every bit of your macro targets and some on that time because you you are it's it's you've been hit harder and it has demand for more. So making sure that it's well fed after that. Yeah, just like you guys. I mean, it's really like sleep, sunlight, and light movement. And so you get a lot of that from like just going outside and um, like I'll go for like really light hikes or, or walks um, and kind of try and absorb as much of the sun as I can. Um, get in some mobility and, and express the joints that I know that um, I, I want to take them through full range of motion just so I can get more blood flow throughout my body. Um, but really, it's it, it really amounts to that. And, um, you know, trying to get slow my heart rate down, like after I've done a really hard, if I know I've had a really tough session, I'm like, oh my God, I think mm -hmm. I overdid it a bit. Like, uh, really try to get into that calm state as quick as I can. Like, even after that has has helped me to kind of rebound a bit faster yeah, as well. It, it's strange, right? It's the it's the movement paradox. Like, you think too much movement or too intense a movement, I overreached, my body's overtrained, it needs to heal. You would think no movement would allow that healing process to happen yeah. faster. But it's not true. Light movement. Now, there are cases where no movement's better. If you're really fucked, like if you really messed yourself up, yeah, you, you probably yeah, you, do want to sleep. You're like borderline but, acute injury. Yeah, but you'd know, like, you, you know, you would know that. You wouldn't be able to do anything else. Otherwise, the, I, I remember specifically one time I worked out, this is when I was a kid where I thought more was better. And I remember I worked out my legs so hard that the next day, this was over the summer, 
And what I used to do this, right? Every summer, I was always like, I'm going to gain 10 pounds by the time I go back to school. It's this thing, right? So I would hammer the shit out of myself. And I'll never forget, I, I did this with legs. And I woke up the next day and I was so sore in my legs that it was hard to get out of bed. And I had barely, and I'm like, but then that day, I actually had this girl I was going to meet up with. And you know, when you're a teenage boy, like, <laughs> Is this could, the same when you rode a bike yeah, like miles to, I, to go hang out with? All of them. I could have <laughs> I could have missed my legs could have fallen off. I would have found a way. Right. Yeah. I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna yeah. meet up with this girl. So I'm like, oh man, I gotta ride my bike. She lived like, you know, three miles away. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be terrible. Whatever, it's a girl, so I'll do it. And I remember I got on the bike and about half a mile into the ride, my legs started feeling really good and I was riding. And I was starting to kind of piece this together a little bit like, huh, like, am I going to recover? And and then I thought I'm going to be even more sore tomorrow because I had to ride my bike so much. And I wasn't. The next day it was way better. That's when I first started kind of putting it together like, oh, I think movement. And then when it really, what really sealed the deal were the trigger sessions in MAPS Anabolic. When I started doing those trigger sessions, I noticed that I would just recover like crazy and I would be able to add more volume to my hard workouts because I was doing uh, trigger sessions on a regular basis. So it's like this movement paradox, like more movement actually facilitates recovery if you've done too much movement, which is you know pretty strange. The right dose. 